Happy day, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Snap Political. So glad you're here wherever you are in the world. Thanks so much for joining with me. Watching, commenting, listening, sharing, giving input as well in the comment section. I truly appreciate you. Let's just dive right in, guys. You know, some more of the political, uh, what's going on with Trump, what's going on with our government. Let's tap into this. Well, the judge has released the Fulton County Special Grand Jury's full report on interference into the 2020 election in Georgia. The jury heard from dozens of witnesses before recommending charges last December to District Attorney Fonnie Willis. Now let's bring in Jessica Levinson to talk a little bit about because the legal stuff guys, that we are seeing right in this. Up. So, Jessica, this is like a 27-page uh, document, I think, yeah. at least more than 20 pages. Um, so I know you've just gotten a chance to peruse it, but what have we learned so far uh, from the report? I think we've learned so far really what formed the blueprint of the indictment, that it makes a lot of sense having seen the indictment that this was the grand jury report. And what we've seen is that the district attorney did not decide to charge all of the people and all of the crimes that were recommended by the grand jury. So does the public have access to this information? If they say they released a document, do we have access to this? I want to go out there and look, look for myself. I thought about that today. I was like, OK, I'm really, really interested to see, you know, some of the charges and, and how they broke them down and what the grand jury has actually, you know, what they're saying here. And what we also see, I think, and what's clear to me is why she picked RICO, because the first part of this report is really all about the facts. The second part of the report is all about citing relevant statutes. And what I take away from it is really why she decided to charge this case as a large criminal enterprise, because you see a lot of people involved and maybe not always involved in the same actions, but it comes large criminal enterprise. Come on. Come on. So we I don't think she on the home team. I, I hear she might be giving facts, but I'm still <clears throat> I'm still not impressed with that. Rico, come on. R really? It's down to the same purpose. And that purpose is to try and overturn the election. And just hearing this week arguments by Kenneth Chesbro and Sidney Powell saying you should sever my case from the rest of this case. Looking at this report, it makes sense why the district attorney said, no, this is part of a cohesive whole. Look at everything. Look at all of the players. And we're going forward with RICO and other charges. Interesting. Then does it explain anything then about why she did not charge uh, current South Carolina uh, Senator Lindsey Graham and uh, former Senators uh, Kelly Loeffler uh, as well as uh, Purdue. Um, she chose not to indict them. Did they, based on what you can read so far, did they not fit so neatly into this um, conspiracy, I guess, racketeering um, uh, narrative? So I'm going to dodge a little bit and say mm. clearly that the district attorney did not think that they did. Mm -hmm. And so there are obviously issues, not just legal, but also political charging a current senator and two former senators. But what I also want to caution is, while it is shocking, and I hope it is always shocking to see a grand jury report saying we are recommending charges against a sitting senator and two former senators, What's oh, not surprising that, yes. is to see a grand jury report more than what a district attorney ultimately moves forward with. So I do want people to know that if you see a grand jury report, and again, none of this is typical, but the fact that the district attorney in deciding what she could move forward with to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, it's not strange that you would pick portions to move forward. And so with respect to the former senators, I mean, obviously that is damning for them politically, but mm -hmm. I think the district attorney, like every district attorney, is looking at what she can really bring, not to a special grand jury or a grand jury, but what she can really bring to a jury in a complicated trial. There were also issues with them, potentially, as you mentioned, not being part of the full conspiracy and, um, other issues dealing with, I suspect, potentially removal that may have made her kind of back away mm -hmm. from that. So, and I'm, I'm, Graham Cates is being fantastic and kind of pulling out little portions of the report for me. And in regards to um, uh, David Perdue, uh, what the report says is that he repeatedly. Okay, so 
based off what they just said, guys, based off what they just said, how are they able to come up with the allegations? I mean, okay, so they have proof. And I know I might be jumping again a little bit because she hasn't elaborated a little bit further about the charges, but this is all so this is also outlandish that we already know that Judiciary Committee, you know, has written a letter to call her in because the way she went about this was all wrong. And now they she's picked and choose who she's not going to file charges against. So they're going to explain in here. She's kind of just did that as to why they weren't charged with the charges that the others, even though I guess it's a higher level of penalty based off of the people that she named. But still. Let's see. Uh, what the report says is that he repeatedly communicated with multiple Georgia officials and um, and also officials, I guess, fo and focused on efforts in Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and the District of Columbia. Um, but there's a, an interesting footnote that I think sort of speaks to your answer and my uh, question. There's a footnote that says, one of the dissenting jurors voting against recommending seeking indictments of former uh, senators Purdue and Loeffler on a RICO claim believes that their statements following the November 2020 election, while pandering to their political base, did not give rise to them being guilty of a criminal conspiracy. I'm glad somebody so that sort out. of the feeling that they were kind of jumping into the conversation because it would help them politically, but not necessarily part of this grand plan. First of all, great reporting by Graham. I want to echo that. And great question. I mean, you zeroed in on exactly, I think, the thing that is important, which is there's a difference between being involved in an effort to say, I don't think that Joe Biden won. I think Trump won. And then that language and those actions crossing the line from political rhetoric into criminal liability. And one so of the that's what they're trying to prove. Is it just words, rhetoric, or what is the allegations that has led to the criminal charges? That's what we need to zoom into. Things I think that we see, and again, your question brought this out so clearly. One of the things I think we see from the report is that not every communication is criminal. Not right. every communication where you might say to a Georgia official, that, what's going I on that, with brother. the election or what else can we do here? would cross the line into a violation of the Georgia Penal Code. Mm -hmm. But right. what we have, I think, with respect to the others who are charged, is more involvement, more wow. specific That's actions taken like that cross works. that line into alleged legal liability. And that's why I think we see, and you were exactly right to highlight, that dissenting juror. Sometimes, let's remember, one dissenting juror can, I don't want to say spook, but can make a district attorney feel circumspect because the district attorney, when they bring this to a jury, they need a unanimous verdict. And if you have at an earlier phase and an easier phase for the prosecutor to pass, one juror saying, I'm not sure, that can key to the district attorney there might be an issue here. Well, yes. If one person is saying, you know what, wait a minute, I don't see how you have proof or evidence that's going to suggest that this person did this particular action to, to um, criminate themselves. So, yeah, let's go. That's what a juror is supposed to do. Don't go along with everybody else. No, speak up, speak out. Right. And, you know, we are talking about a really high profile case with really, you know, high profile um, defendants. And I'm just kind of reading a little bit on uh, Lindsey Graham. We, we know that he testified. He was he was not charged, but we know that he got in contact with the secretary of state in Georgia and. I'm reading an interview from uh, Raffensperger about that conversation. But what you do get from the conversation is that Raffensperger was, re was very sort of caught off guard about what Lindsey Graham was asking him. But Lindsey Graham doesn't do what the former president is accused of doing, which is asking outright for votes to be found. So what does that mean when someone says, find me some votes? I mean, it could be such a, a broad you know, is this hypothetical? Is this, you know, literal? You know, is and and was the intention was 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 the intention behind the word to do something illegal? And that is the problem. That is the problem. Isn't this what Al Gore did? And another person that ran for president. I can't remember who the person was, 
But isn't this what they Al Gore did when he found that that some shady stuff was going on? And didn't we just hear in the state of Arizona where they found out some of some stuff was going on that was faulty? So come on, you know, come on. Lindsey Graham is asking about the laws uh, surrounding uh, signatures, the laws in Georgia, what sort of leeway a secretary of state has as kind of the governing individual when it comes to elections, but not outright saying, can you find me these votes? And maybe that's part of the reason why Afani will... And, and so let's say he, he did say, can you find me these votes? If you got machines that are that are faulty, if half of the votes that weren't, that were supposed to have been mailed in somehow got lost. If I mean, so that's a real sketchy, that's a thin line, really slippery slope right there. So how can you say it was criminal activity? I chose not to include him in this case. I mean, Anne Marie, exactly, 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 right? That is the difference. And I think you highlighted that division really well, which is now we might all suspect what Lindsey Graham wanted and or kind of lightly intended for the ending of that conversation to be. But that is different from can't you just find me 11,000, you know, et cetera, et cetera, votes. And so when it comes really to it like who's that. charged and who's not charged, as we've been discussing, I think the difference isn't were you in any way involved? Did you mm. make a phone call? The difference is, what did you say on the phone call? What were specific steps that you took? Did you allege fraud that didn't occur? Did you try and were you involved in this scheme to try and breach voting machines, for instance? I mean, those are things where you can see a much clearer line to criminal liability. But a call from a senator saying, even if it's you know tinged with a good deal of political pressure, tell me about the laws, tell me about your role. I think we can absolutely see why a district attorney looking at this would say, I don't want to move forward on an already historic and complicated case right. on conversations that a juror could say, it's just at the edge of the line, but it's not over it. Right, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Jessica Levinson, thank you so much. Okay, guys. So let's for a quick second, see who Lindsey Graham is. And this is what I do as I learn, guys. I do the research as I go. I look for the videos. I look, I, you know, based off what is going on, based off my last, I kind of like leaving you guys a trail. So go back and check out some of the videos more recent, starting with why I switched my political party, blah, blah, blah. I mean, go back and check out, you know, this is what I, you know, highlight to you is for you to, to do the homework and dig and make your own decisions based off of factual information and not just going along with what they're telling us. Let's go and look this up ourselves. Let's go and look at the paperwork. Let's go and look and see what they're actually saying and listen to some other experts in the field who are not tied to the political parties, either one of them. But they can give you a non-biased perspective based off of facts, law, you know, um, what the, the allegations, all that good stuff. And do you actually think that that is what Trump was going to was actually meant to say, OK, yeah, go ahead and find me 10,000 votes, 11, whatever the number was. I don't care. Just do it. No matter how you do it, just find me the votes. Come on. that I just don't believe that. I'm sorry. I don't believe that. So who is Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham is a uh, senator from South Carolina. And let's go down here. It's a little bit more information. You can go, you all can find it yourself. Lindsey Graham is an American lawyer and politician serving as a senior United States senator from South Carolina, a seat he has held since 2003, a member of the Republican Party. And also he was chair of the Senate com Committee on the Judiciary from 2019 to 2021. So if you want to know more about who he is, I, you can go ahead and Google him just like I did, who was Lindsey Graham, and go and read about him. But I was like, okay, who is this person? So, but he wasn't charged because you had a juror to speak out to say that we don't see, or Purdue, and it was one other person they named, we don't see where what they so-called did meets the evidence or the allegations is not adding up. So they don't know, this is not fitting the agenda here. And I'm glad, I'm glad people aren't just sitting in there going along with, with, with what everybody else is saying because they're afraid to speak out. So I'm, I wanted to look up, and we did this on um, Sebo and Snappa about, about what a grand jury is. A grand jury is a group of citizens empowered by law to conduct legal proceedings, investigate p potential criminal conduct, and determine whether criminal charges 
should be brought a grand jury may be may subpoena physical evidence or a person to testify so it's a citizen these people may or may not have had training in the area most likely i guess they don't but i don't know how the selection was made and who has who does what in this situation but uh in this case but i will say that i'm glad that somebody was like no we aren't buying it this is not enough evidence and they should not be charged he should not be charged so all right guys let me know what you think as we continue to go down the rabbit hole because that's what this is this is a big long deep rabbit hole of uncovering facts fiction to get to the bottom of it so we can really see what's going on who's telling the truth what is it really truly all about but i think we already know so thank you so much guys for watching please keep coming back i appreciate your support subscribe share the video let's get this let's get that like button let's get the likes up let's get the likes up enjoy your day and i'll see you soon